you're listening to Corb Conversations on the Business of Brands with Sudeep Chawla and Sharavana Raghavan. We recently did a Q&A episode and we left out one often asked question Sudeep. Given my masochistic behavior I decided to take up that question which chose to chose to leave out. This is more in the educator space, so I expect you to chip in liberally. Despite this being my turn to be interviewed, I think I'll step out of the zone and interview a little more than I'm supposed to. Okay, fair. Go ahead. So this question I get asked quite often is that how do I get into FMCG? Both of you are from FMCG. All the examples you give are FMCG, but I'm not, I'm not able to get into FMCG. So FMCG is a little glamorized, but if you look at what the under underneath intention behind this question is that how do I learn marketing? And the question seems to be, if I'm not in FMCG, how do I learn marketing? And I think it also comes from a place where. the environments are different the fast moving environment with digital marketing prone uh, there are a lot of people who ask me this question are really looking for marketing skills practical marketing skills and they don't have a time or a place to pick this up or they don't have a live mentor like probably you and I had at the beginning of our marketing careers and that's where this question is coming from and uh, my refrain to a lot of them has been that because you want to learn marketing if you've decided to get better as a marketer take away the ownership of that from your company and you take ownership of it you become the owner of your own learning and that is how you can become a great marketer it doesn't matter where you are you you can learn marketing anywhere because it is always about the fundamentals working in a startup environment you could you could find a mentor anywhere but in today's time the main point i say is you can learn so much for free online with your access to so much information and if you know what you're looking to learn you can learn it and you do not need to be anywhere to become an expert if you choose to learn you become a learner forever learning you never finish learning and uh, that's where i will lean on you because you are the educator between the two of us and what's your take on this <laughs> now i think i completely agree with you sharan the prime underlying reason for people to ask that question is that they want to learn marketing Uh, with a significant assumption that people who work in FMCG are the only one who know marketing, although I must also say that we have, between the two of us, tried to take up a lot of examples from the startup space as well when right. we talk about marketing and its fundamentals. Deliberately so, so that people see that the world of marketing is all pervasive and it definitely exists significantly outside FMCG also. True. But going back to your primary suggestion to everybody that uh, if you want to learn, you want to first take ownership of your learning and get into the space of continuous learning, continuous improvement. I completely echo that. I also echo your second assertion that there is sufficient amount of learning material as well as mentors that are available today. Uh, also, because there are mediums available, you have podcasts, you have instagram you have linkedin etc so there is no dearth of uh, gyan available what i would also like to add sharan to these two three assertions that you have already made is that if like you said if you know what you want to learn it should become easier i would possibly say that if you want to learn marketing at a very very fundamental and basic level uh, they should possibly try and bucket their learning into three buckets or pillars the first one of them is branding and we had uh, spoken about branding i think earlier in one of our episodes which was branding mm-hmm. without marketing right and branding where we talk about the fact that branding is a set of promises that 
you and your product or a service makes to the consumer and then tend to deliver it consistently over a period of time. And hence, branding is all about understanding your consumer well, uh, then understanding your own product, your service, etc. very well, and then matching some kind of a consumer stated, unstated, underserved need with what your product or service can offer. Right. It's basically the core of why the brand exists in the first place. Correct. Correct. And once you find that objective and your objective uh, is stated in clearly consumer terms, then you know that you've got your branding right. There are various frameworks around branding. How do you get your proposition right? Uh, we have in the past spoken about uh, you know, various ways of approaching it. Yeah. Uh, and that's not the only way you can think about in many different ways. And I will possibly uh, invite all the listeners and learners to go explore what are the different ways in which branding can be approached. The second pillar is marketing. Yeah. So, uh, once you get your branding right, which means in startup language, you've got your MVP, which is minimum viable product. You've got some early adopters. Now you would want to reach out to a larger number of people. So therefore, you would need to employ what we call as marketing. Now in marketing, it is important to first get your marketing objective right. Yeah. So th which is about the fact that what is it that you want to do with consumers, belief, attitude, such that you influence the consumer behavior going forward. Yeah. So therefore, you must construct what we call as path to purchase. What is it that you're trying to achieve? Do you want to be the most salient brand? Do you want to be associated with certain kind of imagery? Uh, how, would you, how are you planning to differentiate yourself? And therefore, how do you want to communicate it to consumer is something that you need to really, really plan very well. Yeah, and if you get that right, that is where you have got your marketing objective and your marketing understanding right. Yeah, and then comes the most important, yet the most ignored pillar, which is the uh, marketing execution. Yeah, so marketing execution is about understanding various touch points of a consumer and then making sure that your marketing a brief or what you thought your marketing objective was that gets executed across those touch points pretty much yeah. yeah that's the consumer journey we're talking about correct so if you decide what your consumer decision making journey is from the time the consumer feels the need to consume or interact with your brand or your category to the time the consumer finally ends up consuming or interacting with your brand what are the various steps that the consumer goes through and it, each of those steps, do you need to make an intervention? And if you need to do that, what does your marketing objective say? How would you go about doing it? Yeah. And this would involve almost everything that you do from how you communicate, how you are present, what kind of packaging you have, how does the consumer perceive you at every point, what kind of stores you design, what kind of people you hire, what kind of customer service you provide what kind of after sales service you provide, etc, etc. Yeah. So these three buckets, branding, marketing, marketing execution become very, very critical. And as I think everybody would have realized by now, all three of them are tied by one common behavior. Which is talking, keeping your consumer at the core of everything you do. Exactly. Yeah, the consumer centricity. So like you said, keeping consumer at the core, because in all of this, the answer lies with the consumer. And too often, marketers, both in FMCG as well as otherwise, tend to make the mistake of thinking that the brand belongs to the company or to them. The brand actually belongs to the consumer. That's actually very, very well put, because you can want to build the greatest brand you want and have the right intentions. And if the consumers don't oblige, you have no brand left. Correct. That's that's actually very simply put, right? It's to learn marketing, you need to understand the three different basic pillars of marketing. 
your branding. So what is the core of what your brand and business stands for? And then what is the objective you're setting, which is your marketing objective. So your all marketing activities need to have a certain direction. The marketing objective gives you the direction. Yeah. And then understanding in which part of the consumer journey a certain marketing touch point or touch points come into play and using them effectively to drive a certain consumer action is all what marketing is about. So it's consumer, 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 consumer. That said, where do you think this basic understanding of marketing? Because see, when you do an MBA in marketing or when you work, when you've read a book in marketing, which I assume a lot of people have, mm -hmm. where do you think this bit, this basic kind of takes a beating? And why does it take a beat? Is it because we work in silos? Is it because of too much data? So why does it happen? I think uh, uh, a lot of the time when we start working, we get enabled and led by the existing channels. So you start going channel in. So for example, uh, you know, if you have a, if you join a company, which is digital first, yeah, and your company significantly involve, uh, invests into digital marketing, performance marketing, etc. So then most of the marketers then tend to think of themselves as performance marketers and therefore start thinking only channel in. So they will, you know, possibly start developing significantly more insights into how Google works. How can I put GDN or your Google Display Network to work, etc., etc. And that's more a technology understanding. Which is good. You know, you need channel understanding to utilize it best. But what you should start with is your brand and consumer understanding, your marketing objective understanding. So I think stripping down a business of its peripherals and getting to the core of it is something that possibly uh, a lot of the people are not led to do when they join their jobs. And hence, I think a lot of the time we tend to get misled. Right. And there is another question I want to ask you on this. I know you have been a master of your own learning, if I can say that. And you've taken on more responsibility at work from what I've seen just beyond your core job. And that's helped you groom yourself as a marketer even better. So what, how, what can people do, especially those working in startups and in say digital marketing heavy environments, what can they do to go beyond the job brief to learn or to, any, are there any specific activities or tasks they can take up? I think, uh, you know, I would take inspiration from possibly what you and I have been doing for some time now, which is about one, keeping the marketing fundamentals at the center of our consideration. And then, you know, just observing whatever is happening around us in the marketing world and thinking through those uh, through those three pillars that we spoke about and analyzing everything that is happening around us. So analyze yeah. every ad you come across. Every ad, every campaign, every digital creative, ev everything, you know, even a static that I observed on uh, internet, I should be able to think through and say, what, I, what do I think is branding in this? Why have they written? All of this. What do you think is the consumer promise? How is this promise differentiated from its competitors? Who are the competitors? What was the branding of this particular brand the last time I saw it? Has there been a movement? Has there been a consistency? Moving forward, now that I'm seeing this ad, why are they targeting me? Why should I be seeing it? What do I think is their marketing objective? What decision making point am I at right now? And therefore, what, what would this ad do to me? Right? And therefore, getting to execution and all of that. So therefore, if we try to 
analyze every marketing campaign around us through some of these pillars after we have understood them i think it will help significantly in our learning right and the moment you start challenging and analyzing what you see you also start challenging and analyzing what you do as a marketer therefore when you ask these questions of yourself your team your bosses your company that's when your clarity is actually born and when it's looked at from a consumer logic is when marketing clarity emerges you're listening to cob conversations on the business of brands your hosts are sudeep chawla marketing practitioner business leader and educator to advertising and marketing professionals and sharavana raghavan of vitral brand expertise growth consultants to consumer facing brands and businesses for more information go to cobcast.net if you find this podcast helpful please help us by telling your friends and rating us sharan you have had a fairly diverse career and hence i would possibly say that you've had the advantage of having seen marketing from different lenses very different categories different environments different countries etc yeah do you think again the diversity of observation helps diversity of observation can help you in certain aspects in the sense that you're more open to certain logic so i'll give you a funny example this actually happened at monlies where we were making an ad of a mother and daughter making a cake for the father and there was no father in the film and the cue of the father entering the uh, entering the scene was just a calling bell and when we sent it to region for approval i came back there came a question saying if he's the father why is he ringing the bell i i didn't quite understand the question to start with but then i realized in most western cultures where everybody is working everybody has a key if it's your house you enter without having to ring a bell but in india we always have somebody at home to open the door for us so we ring the bell or knock so it's those are the slight cultural nuances but overall the customer centricity the consumer focus that you have doesn't change no matter which market which category or whatever you're doing just being focused on who you do it for why you are going to be a part of their life and how you're going to talk to them and what you're going to tell them is pretty much what marketing is all about yeah that is what i possibly call as variety of observation sharan you know you you don't do anything different but you've just been able to see the same consumer that mother from different lenses you saw her from a tang lens earlier then you saw her from an harpic lens later right yeah similarly if i am a marketer working in a startup in a digital first company i don't need to market to that particular mother myself if i analyze three campaigns that are targeting the mother from three different lenses my job is done one other point i would like to add this is something that we also discussed when we interviewed mr bharat shastri say no matter which industry you're in no matter which category you're working in no matter who your target audience is make it a point to go meet three of your consumers at least every month your target audience just talk to them figure out what their life is about figure out how they're using a category what role it plays you'd be surprised with the wealth of information you get you might not be able to structureize it as you start but as you keep doing it you will see patterns emerge and you will form your own structures and your own hypothesis to start testing in your marketing and that has been the biggest learning i've had in my marketing career of talking to consumers okay fair so i think uh, sharan you've made your point very clear now on to the second one see on to the second one is a is a funny question because it almost feels 
biased just because I have it. I don't value it too much kind of a situation. Because it's easy for me to say FMCG is not the only place when people perceive FMCG to be great. I think it's more than saying how to get into FMCG. I think it's also important to understand why FMCG is is looked at with with great eyes, with adored by a lot of people from outside the industry. And I think it's also got to do with a lot of glamour that FMCG has kind of endured over time. And the TVCs you see, every it's targeted, the mass marketing that FMCG carries has got a sense of myth to it. And the mass impact only amplifies that myth of the of the entire business. And to be honest, this is this was the mother of sales and marketing. So therefore, there is always a rich legacy to look at, to learn from that's happened within your industry that some industries might lack. But even if you look beyond the glamour, the other aspect of FMCG is that a lot of the marketers come from sales. So the basics are a little more ingrained to know how things work at the ground level. And therefore, it actually makes them better marketers because they have this basic grounding without having to take specific effort for it because that's how the career has panned out. All that we talked, we spoke about a little earlier, saying how much you should focus on your basics of marketing. That's more naturally ingrained. And that's the only advantage I see. And that said, I'd say there are also significant downsides to being in FMCG. Because I don't think FMCG is the most conducive place for changes. Because the sheer size of the marketing and sales that we do, any new any new thing that comes up is actually so small. It's almost insignificant before it turns into a tsunami to hit you. Like, so we spoke very highly about how Cadbury, when you were there, reacted to Kinder Joy for such a small impact. And that is not something that naturally comes to FMCG people. We tend to ignore the, of the upstarts. So we never nimble enough. And even the smaller FMCG companies are not nimble enough. And as a result, it's not only the nimbleness, it's also the adoption of technology. I honestly feel a lot of FMCG companies have let the digital wave kind of pass by. And they've been slow to react to the digital marketing. And the big ones that are doing are doing it in a very superficial level. And the startups actually have kind of taken a march, stolen a march over the larger conglomerates on the digital e-commerce front. And the larger company is still catching up. It's, it's open for debate, but that's my perception because the larger ones are more difficult to move. Okay. I let and the prejudice pass. Yeah, yeah, let the prejudice pass. <laughs> and it is also, we spoke about the advantage of legacy of having marketers, right? We also mm. have the burden of the legacy. Yeah. Sometimes things get too systematized to allow for disruptive thinking. Mm -hmm. And there is a backlog of baggage that you carry. And mm -hmm. that baggage certain times ends up driving a decision. Like we say, you are not the marketer. You are not the consumer. Talk to the consumer. Hmm. FMCG is very prone to thinking of themselves, FMCG marketers, prone to thinking of themselves as the consumers after a certain point. Hmm. And the immediate information feedback that happens in the modern marketing world is not something FMCG is very attuned to. Hmm. And there are different issues. So when you go into MNCs, a lot of the MNCs that operate in India do not even do the basics of marketing hmm. because everything is driven by the head office. Hmm. They adapt a TVC, they dub a TVC, and their job is to just make TVCs. And that hmm. kind of only amplifies the glamour quotient. It doesn't really make them better marketers. Hmm. So it is even in FMCG, there are chances, there are very high chances of not learning great marketing. That's what I'm trying hmm. to say. Hmm. Hmm. So marketing is marketing is marketing no matter where you are hmm. you can be a good marketer in any industry in fact even in a b2b system 
you can still be a great marketer yeah. when you have the basics right yeah that's true the other idea is that when the other bias rather towards fmcg is that in fmcg marketing is the central function and every other function works to support the marketing agenda because they are all brand driven hmm if you go across the automotive your product team is the hero marketing hmm. is almost a support function there hmm if you go into say even e-commerce your category team is the hero marketing hmm. functions as a support system there yeah but the truth is that the marketing team is supposed to represent the consumer whether you are a central function or the support function doesn't matter Hmm. being central or support is only a matter of who's holding the pnl hmm. and that is not critical to be a great marketer it's just a critical to be a good business manager you yeah. i'm not saying you should aspire to that but that is irrelevant to the conversation we're having today yes you need uh, wait i think we're saying this for like the a millionth time on this episode that as long as you know what the consumer is about you know what role you're playing you become a great marketer just by following the basics even in a support function if your market if your product team is coming up with a certain product and you can challenge it on the back of your consumer understanding that is your core duty in the business challenge it chisel it into a proper consumer benefit consumer service is when you become a great marketer and the I job would... of marketing is to articulate a consumer tension and solve for it i mean you solve for this consumer tension is when marketing magic happens that's true that's true that's well said sharan and in fact uh, a lot of our people would agree that uh, you know even the product team is actually an extension of the marketing team absolutely yeah it's just that uh, in in a number of technology companies we have put product and marketing as different hmm uh, and the product is a combination of uh, what in fmcg is uh, marketing and r&d right where here the product is more software driven hmm and hence therefore there are uh, teams that understand the software side as well as the consumer side and product team are as uh, as empathetic and as connected to consumers as a marketing team is mm-hmm. yeah so therefore i would in fact also say that use them as your extended arm and thereby leverage their knowledge harness the collective knowledge of the consumer towards unleashing better uh, more efficient more effective campaigns same thing as you said that fmcg while it may be one of the more commonly existing grounds for learning marketing is not an essentiality uh, take sharan's advice uh, invest your time into learning basics of marketing and then wherever you are it doesn't matter you will find sufficient amount of material online sufficient people to learn from and most importantly take charge of your learning when after you've learned the basics keep analyzing every campaign you come across and you will find yourself becoming better every day that's pretty much it i think our listeners should find this useful and hopefully uh, become better marketers wherever they are absolutely and not really be bother about having an fmcg specific career if it happens it happens if it doesn't it doesn't matter yes <laughs> yes okay right. good thanks sharan thank you sudhi Thank you for listening to Cob Conversations on the Business of Brands with Sudeep Chawla and Sharavana Raghavan. Subscribe and learn more at cobcast.net. That's C O B B C A S T dot net.